I'm Dr. Nick Alcaterra. Today, I'll be talking to you about infection control. Infection control is the blanket term that we use to describe how we keep you, our patients, safe from all the various infectious diseases out there, including the new novel coronavirus or COVID-19. I'm gonna start by making a bold statement here, and that is, it is my belief that a dental office is one of the safest places you can go to during this pandemic. Why, you might ask? Well, it's important to remember that dentists and their clinical staff are experts in infection control. We've been doing this since the early 1990s HIV slash AIDS epidemic. What we do is what's called universal precautions. In universal precautions, we assume every patient has every single infectious disease out there. As a result, we wear masks, we wear face protection, we wear eye protection, shields, gowns, whatever we need to prevent the transmission of diseases. In addition, we sterilize any and all instrument that goes in your mouth, as well as any other things that go in your mouth are single use only. As a result, you won't find anything in the news that ever describes a patient getting uh, infectious disease from a dental office when universal precautions were done properly. However, in the light of this new virus, in the light of some of the unknowns, there are some extra precautions we're going to be taking, and I'll be talking to you about those today. I'm here in one of our treatment rooms. I'll be talking about some of the unique things related to the physical configuration of our office, as well as some processes, some unique to us, that we're doing to keep our patients safe and reduce the likelihood of disease transmission here in the office. There's been a lot of talk about airborne or aerosol transmission of the virus. We or you could spend hours looking into this, but that's not the intent of this video. But I'm gonna summarize. If a patient with an active COVID-19 infection does come into the office, and we're doing extensive screening, both by phone and before they actually come into the office to reduce the likelihood of that happening, if they do make it to the office, into the chair, there's a couple things that can happen. If that patient with an active infection coughs or sneezes, they will produce what are called respiratory droplets. Respiratory droplets are fairly large. Those are known to be infectious. Um, but we're ideally going to be reducing the likelihood of that specific patient coming here because if they're coughing or sneezing, they're not going to be coming here. That patient, though, can also produce what are called aerosols or airborne droplets. Those are tiny, tiny little particles, much, much smaller than respiratory droplets. Um, those can contain viral material. That, those can be produced by certain dental procedures. They can also be produced by simply talking. Um, it is not known as of this time if those are in fact infectious. It's mid-May 2020 while we're filming this. It's known they contain viral material. It's not known whether that viral material is sufficient enough to transmit the virus. But as we do in dentistry, we always err on the side of the caution. We always, we practice standard precautions. We assume that that's going to be infectious. So then what are we doing about aerosols? Well, all five treatment rooms that we have here have high-speed suction. All right, high-speed suction, it's also called high-volume evacuation. This is hooked up to an incredibly powerful suction. It's, it's centrally plumbed. All right, when we do a procedure, and remember, not all procedures produce aerosols. When we do a procedure, we use this. This will suction saliva, water, dental material, and aerosol droplets. This will reduce the likelihood of any aerosols coming out of the patient's oral cavity. This is incredibly strong. All right, my assistants and I, we joke with patients. We say, this is strong enough to pull out your tonsils. Now we don't try that, but many a uvula has been suctioned into this previously. All right, our hygienists, now many dentists do not have this for hygiene. Our, all of our rooms are plumbed for this. So our hygienists will also be doing this because if they're doing a procedure that produces an aerosol, they wanna be using this too. At the end of every single procedure, when we, um, when we dismiss the patient, we turn on the same high volume evacuation, but it's shaped like this. All right. This cone is a much larger area. It can pull in any and all aer um, aerosol particles that are circulating in the air that might not have been picked up by this. All right. 
we're not a high volume office. We don't, we're not a mill. We have plenty of time between patients, typically um, 15 minutes or more. So we dismiss the patient, we turn this on, we disinfect the room. Any aerosols that may have been present will end up in here. What else are we doing? Well, what I'm standing here next to is a true medical grade air purifier. No offense to Walmart, but this is not your $30 Walmart brand, okay? This is Medify Air. You can Google them. I spent a ton of time researching what would be the most appropriate solution for the office. I arrived at this. This is a true medical grade air purifier. It exceeds HEPA standards. This will filter down particles to the size of 0.1 micron. The virus is 0.125 microns. We have several of these located in the office. So any viral particles produced as you know, aerosol or airborne that is not taken care of by this will get um, filtered out by this. So we have this, have many of these located throughout the office. Some other things. Some offices are set up as open bays where you can literally see your neighbor. We're not set up like that. We have partitions between the five treatment rooms. So if one patient is having procedures done in this room, in the room next door, it's closed. It's nearly sealed. There's no way any um, viral material from one patient can make it into the room next door. Again, because we have five nearly sealed treatment rooms, we don't have an open bay concept. Some other things. All five of our treatment rooms have plenty of natural light. We do that because no one wants dentistry in a box. You don't want to sit in a windowless room. We have plenty of natural sunlight. It helps ease the patient, but the other great thing about it is it's known that natural sunlight, which has UV light, will neutralize the virus with time. So if an aerosol is generated and you have plenty of UV light coming in, that UV light very quickly will start to degrade that viral material. Okay. Lastly, we could spend a ton of time talking about how we sterilize and disinfect rooms. Um, a lot of time. I'll just say that after procedures, we wipe down all the surfaces with what's called cavicide. Cavicide is a medical grade surface disinfectant. It is tuberculocidal. I mentioned tuberculosis because that is one of the most difficult pathogens to kill. This will kill this. This virus is a wimp compared to tuberculosis. All right, so any viral particle that makes it here, we wipe it down with this. The virus has no chance. Lastly, we sterilize instruments, and we're going to talk about how extensive that is and how that also keeps you safe. I'm standing here in front of our two autoclaves in our sterilization center. Autoclaves are specialized medical devices that use intense heat and pressure to kill any germs that are present on dental instruments. These are mid-mark autoclaves. We have one autoclave running at all times throughout the day. This ensures we have clean, sterile instruments at all times. They're both less than three years old. I purchased them myself. Midmark makes top-the-line autoclaves. They make them for both dentistry as well as for hospitals throughout the world. When you have a Midmark autoclave, you know you're getting the top-the-line sterilization. I'm now going to walk through how instruments are processed within our office. An instrument is used on a patient in a treatment room. They are then brought to our sterilization center where they're soaked in an ultrasonic cleaner in an antibacterial enzyme. Those instruments are then bagged and placed into the autoclave. That sterilization cycle within the autoclave is then run. Once that is complete, we have a sterilized instrument in a sealed bag. This here is a sterile instrument in a sealed bag. This will go into the treatment room. It will not be opened until you, the patient, has arrived and we're ready to start the procedure. This ensures that any and all instruments are clean and sterile until they enter your mouth. In addition, we also use some single-use items that are sealed and sterilized by the manufacturer. Again, this is one of many things we do to keep patients safe and to prevent the transmission of infectious diseases. You've just seen some of the many things we do here in the office to prevent the transmission of infectious diseases and to keep you safe. It's a lot. In these uncertain times though, it's normal to be nervous or to have questions. But remember, dentistry is a profession and this office in particular have an impeccable track record at keeping our patients safe. 
As more is learned about this virus, we will continue to modify and or adapt our procedures and protocols for infection control to ensure that the virus is not transmitted within this office. In the meantime, if there are any questions about infection control or anything else, feel free to reach out to any staff member or to me personally. For those of you who know me, and most of you do, I'm kind of a geek, I'm kind of a nerd, I'm into these types of things, so I'm happy to talk to you about these things in any detail you want. Thanks for watching.